أبكي على شام الهوى بعيون مظلوم مناضل وأذوب في ساحاتها بين المساجد والمنازل رباه سلم أهلها واحمي المخارج والمداخل واحفظ بلاد المسلمين عن اليمائن والشمائل مستضعفين فمن لهم يا رب غيرك في النوازل مستمسكين بدينهم ودماؤهم عطر الجنادل رفعوا الأكفة ضرعوا عند الشدائد والزلازل يا رب صن أعراضهم ونفوسهم من كل قاتل وطفوا دروعا حرة دون البنادق والقنابل نامت عيون صغارهم واستيقظت نار المعاول لا عاش قاتلهم ولا دامت له يوما أنامل وعليه أصبح حوبة Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those of you that don't know, in 2013, a delegation from Greenland Masjid went to Syria to see firsthand the plight of the, the Syrian refugees. Um, when they came back, they decided that we could no longer just sit around and do nothing, and something had to be done. Um, in 2014, the GLM task force was formed. Alhamdulillah, the, the task force is a group of volunteers, um, members of staff at Green Lane Masjid, local business people, and also um, we've got a partner involved. Our, our partner um, is somebody that we felt that could help us operate within Syria, somebody with a good foothold, somebody that's established, and that's human appeal. Um, and Alhamdulillah, we've, we've formed this partnership where human appeal and Green Lane Masjid um, together will be operating in Syria and will be sponsoring a bread factory in Shawa. So today, the aim of this video is just to, we've got the brothers around, Alhamdulillah, um, everyone's here. I think we're missing a, f a few volunteers, but the majority of brothers are here. We've got Human Appeal, we've got Armory Jars, he's a centre manager, and he's also heading up the, the, the um, GLM task force. Um, we've got the marketing team, the team responsible for fundraising, um, and, so in 2015, um, in fact just recently, a group of volunteers at the GLM Task Force went to Turkey to see firsthand the, the work that Human Appeal are doing um, in, in Turkey and in Syria with the, with the Syrian refugees. So today we're here to share the stories um, so you, you can see firsthand exactly what the plight is of the Syrian refugees. And inshallah, just to give you an insight into what the work that we'll be doing inshallah, um, so, without further ado, um, we'll, we'll, we'll hand it over to Ahmad Ijaz, um, for those of you that don't know Ahmad, and you might remember him from the video that he made um, a few years back when he went to Syria. Uh, so Ahmad is the centre manager here at Green Lane uh, Masjid. He's also heading up the um, Green Lane task force. So, um, Ahmad, assalamu alaikum. Welcome, uh, So, first and foremost, Jazakallah khair, um, for all the hard work that you're putting in, Ahmad. Oh, yeah. um, so ultimately, I think what the viewers probably want to know is what is um, the purpose behind GLM Task Force? I think the purpose behind GLM Task, task Force is uh, to cater for the needs of our Syrian brothers and sisters. I think that's the main objective in whatever we can and however we can. So when we came together with Human Appeal, um, priorities were put on the table by Human Appeal who are excellent in their delivery in Syria. And the main priority, what was established in the UK and even when we went to Syria, was uh, the need for food and in particular the need for bread and water and what we provided last year, medical aid. Okay. Uh, so you've obviously been twice now. Um, yeah. um, so 
you, you've just come back, Ahmed. Um, obviously, we, everybody knows that there's a massive need um, in Syria. But from your experience, what would you say is the biggest need? I mean, you've spoken to the Syrian refugees, you've seen it firsthand. It, it, you've almost been our eyes and ears uh, over there in, in Syria, in Turkey, sorry. So what's, what's the biggest need that there, there is there? You know, uh, for a nation so crippled by war and atrocity, uh, you'd think they'd want to rebuild their houses, rebuild their lives in whatever way they can. But everybody overwhelmingly, and I'm sure the brothers who accompanied me on the trip, they'll agree, everybody asks for bread and water. You know, the basic necessities for mankind to survive, they ask for that. They didn't even ask for a roof over their head, they ask for bread and water. So, um, obviously, you know, water is something, bread is something that we kind of take um, for granted. And I know, I, I, I think you, you'd probably need to go out there and experience it to, to actually get a, you know, a good insight um, into the actual need. But we'll, we'll move on. Um, so Amr's mentioned the, the partnership with Human Appeal. We, we've got a representative here um, sat with us. Um, so, brother, it's, it's Bash, right? Yeah, but Bash for sure, Bashid. Bashid, sorry, uh, sorry, brother Bashid. Okay, so, brother Bashid, um, obviously, we've just spoke about the partnership that Green Lane uh, Task Force and, and Human Appeal have formed, alhamdulillah. Um, so, as, as a charity, why did you guys decide to work with, with, with the task force? Um, alhamdulillah, I mean, myself, I'm from Birmingham, mashallah, and he's one of our brothers, Omar Ali, who's our partnership manager, um, who has sat with Amin, um, mashallah. But for my, myself, I can, you know, it's a, it's a simple question. I've been coming to Mission for, for a long time, alhamdulillah. And mashallah, they're very well organised, a uh, very, very good bunch of brothers, and mashallah, I'm sure sisters as well, um, who work hard to, to run the masjid in a, in a, in a really, in a, in a way to serve um, the community. And we do that as well uh, in terms of the charity worldwide. And alhamdulillah, you know, charity starts off by grassroots and looking after the community first. And I think that blend of the charity work and our experience, international experience, along with the organisation of this masjid, um, alhamdulillah, I think it, inshallah it can be even stronger and we can deliver our aid, inshallah, even better. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. So, um, you know, we're told that obviously this project, just for you, the brothers and sisters that don't know, it's a 100% donation uh, policy. No, Is that right? Alhamdulillah. Okay, Kala, so uh, I assume that Human Appeal uh, and the task force will be raising money. Um, it'll all go into one central pot, yeah. and obviously that pot will then be used um, to, to, to support the bread factory in, in Syria, right? Yeah, that's correct. So basically for every for every donation in terms of water valves, in terms of orphans, in terms of um, zakat, we have it on pot. Okay. Um, so this itself, this exact uh, partnership uh, for the flood distribution for uh, task force and human appeal has its own, inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair for that, brother. So we've got... Um, uh, Brother Imran, Imran's uh, a volunteer on the uh, GLM task force uh, and Imran has recently been with the task force and, and seen uh, first hand the, the plight of the Syrian refugees. So, Salaam uh, Alaikum. Imran, first and foremost, thank you for your time. I know it's 11 o'clock, half 11 on a Sunday uh, uh, night and I know you guys have got work in the morning. So, first and foremost, just have to look ahead for all your time and effort. Um, Imran, you've, you were, obviously went um, to Turkey and you, you went up to the Syrian border and you've seen the work that human appeal were doing. Um, first and foremost, I just want to ask you, how, how has the, the trip um, affected you as, as an individual? Um, as an individual, I'm, I've come back here now and we realise that we're raising 500,000, mashallah, which is amazing. But if I'm completely honest, it doesn't even cover breakfast for Idlib. And you know, we've still got we've still got lunch. Um, you you know, as you can see, brothers and sisters, it's you know I think everyone that's been and everyone that knows what's happening, it's it's a very emotional subject. And you know, we were talking about the, making the video earlier on, and I said you know, have no doubt that by the time we end the recording, everyone will probably be in tears because. Um, you know, we we we've got children, we've got brothers, we've got sisters, we've got mothers, and th the one thing that sticks out for me is that I've got I've I've got kids, and if my children were ever saying to me that they were hungry, and I never had the ability to provide for them, I honestly don't know how that would feel. 
I honestly don't know that. If, imagine if your children were saying that to you, so your children are coming to you, if you, you know, and saying, you know, mom, dad, I'm hungry, and you haven't got the means to, to provide them with anything. What what would you say to them? And this is the plight of the Syrian refugees. You know, they've they've got children, and the children are coming to them and saying they want food, and they haven't got any food. But inshallah, um, together as a community, as a congregation, as a task force, we're going to raise this money. As you said, the the, the target's five hundred thousand pounds, inshallah. Um, and more and more inshallah and we're going to raise it so Brother Imran, Jazakallah uh, khair um, so you saw the refugees and you've obviously spoke to them I know you guys went to orphanages and you went to the to the um, human appeal storage places where they keep the flour and you saw everything um, you, know, you know I mean I hear stories about the, the Syrian refugees saying that all they need and, and want is bread SubhanAllah you know it's really true that's all they were asking for they were we asked them questions do you need you know, are you trying to rebuild your houses? Are you trying to, you know, do you need medical aid? And the, you know, the answer from everyone, wherever we went, was flour. Just flour. That's all we need. Just flour. Okay, so you, you went to a bread factory, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, how, how, how do they operate? I mean, because... I mean, w w when we went, I went as a volunteer as well, and as a local business owner and hoping to fundraise on behalf of local businesses, even nationwide, um, we needed to see that obviously the aid, which everyone's usually you know, skeptical, skeptical about, does it actually get there, is it being um, used efficiently, all our funds. So when we went out there, it was really just to see um, how human appeal work, um, how uh, the region um, would work under all the, um, if, if we were to keep supporting them with funds, and it was just outstanding of how well and how efficiently um, they were getting the aid over the border. Absolutely amazing. And it wasn't actually just coming from Human Appeal or IHH or other charities operating there. The actual um, words were coming direct out of the Syrian refugees' mouths. We were at a, um, at a, a rehabilitation clinic which is the holding gap between where uh, the hospitals are too full, um, so they can't hold on to the, uh, the, the patients for long. So the, they were actually in these uh, rehabilitation clinics where they were recovering. And the people there themselves, in the middle of Syria, were saying, we've actually had deliveries of flour from Human Appeal. Wow. And, we're and they didn't know we were there for bread, uh, flour or bread or anything, did they? They, did, they, they did. just thought we were visiting. So, you, you know, I, I think it's important that um, w one of the reasons that we, you know, we went out as a task force, uh, uh, I say we, um, I was meant to be going, but alhamdulillah, Allah had something better planned. Um, one of the reasons we went is because we wanted to, f we want to know that the money that we're collecting is being spent in the right places. And we, there's a lot of, you know, um, scaremongering and there's a lot of stories that you hear where people donate to charities and the money doesn't reach the, you know, the orphans or the widows or wherever it's meant to go. And then some people say that in transition, the money gets lost. So, you know, you give a pound and 20 pence will get there or 50 pence or whatever. So we wanted to be absolutely sure that the money would go to the Syrian refugees. So with all the brothers, I think that when, are, are we confident now as a, as a task force that the money will be going? Um, sorry, brother, I, I know you've said that human appeal will be, but I just want to hear it you from You know, can my... I just categorically say, um, this is my second visit to um, the situation over there. And uh, on this trip, we met the whole chain. Okay. So we met the suppliers, we met the distributors, we met the, the factory owners, we met the workers, we met the, um, the people, the recipients of that bread. You know, we met the whole chain, right? And I can honestly tell you that, you know, I'm totally 100% convinced that whatever aid we're going to give, 100% is going to cross that border and it's going to influence millions. And I'm, I'm not joking, if we can get this £500,000, we're going to feed millions of people, not hundreds of thousands, millions. And, you know, going off on, going off on that, the, the need, you can't even begin to comprehend the need. SubhanAllah. I'm a, you've been twice now. Um, what's your biggest memory? You know, I always come back with the kids. I leave my heart there with them. And I've been there twice. I've been into refugee camps. I've been into orphanages. And, you know, I don't see one sad child 
Right, and it amazes me, and I come home to three boys who can argue over a packet of sweets. It's fun, like. And you know, even how amazing were the kids, guys? Mm. You know, they were feeding us. We were giving them sweets. Things they can't get bread, so sweet was like sweets was like a luxury to them. And they were eating it themselves. They were coming around, feeding us, hand feeding us. You know, and these are kids who are like you know being picked up and. The first orphanage was, I think, of the, fir the first orphanage was just a different feeling, a different, different world for me because, you know, the kids suffer from losing their parents, mum and dad, their grandparents, their families, everybody. Then they get taken into care. And this particular orphanage was for kids who had been sexually abused in care because of them being made orphans. And uh, they're in a great place. That orphanage is just an amazing place. Okay, I want to bring uh, Brother Azar in. Um, so Brother Azar is again a, a volunteer on the task force and he also accompanied um, the task force to Turkey um, a, a few weeks ago. So uh, Brother Azar, first of all, just like a lot for, for giving us your time uh, to come and speak to us today. So um, I'm assuming this was your first trip um, to, to a situation yes. like this? Yes, my first trip ever in my life. Um, such a life-changing experience. Um, I'm, I'm a local businessman. I run national and international businesses. Um, in Syria, this opportunity that came about, it wasn't about business, it was all about humanity. And this is what I felt this project was all about. I got there, and as my brothers have said, just you see people, the only, thing that, the only thing that's important for them is just simply bread, just to live. And they don't complain, like exactly what our children back at home, they're all complaining about silly things. You go there and you see all the children and you see the wounded people we saw in the, in the hospitals there. It's just really, it's just really shocking. But, but, but what they did say, one, one, one chap said to me, one of the refugees said to me, in his bed, I think he was half, he was blinded, and he's deaf, he was seriously injured. He said to me, I don't want your sympathy. If you can just help, that, that's better than your sympathy. And if you can do something for us, if you can give us bread, give us flour, all our brothers, all our families that are back there, that's all we want. We, we don't need sympathy, just help us. And I think Allah Ta'ala has given us a great opportunity. You, everyone gets the opportunity in life. It's all a test, this life is all a test. And really, I think it's a great opportunity. I know it's a pretty wrong thing to say, but it's a great opportunity to help to do something, even if you can donate even one pence. It's all going to make a difference. I mean, the 500,000 pounds I think we're looking for is such an easy task between a lot of people. If we all unite, um, and I believe this, this task force and Human Appeal have got such a fantastic organisation. I personally, I like structured businesses organized businesses and I personally want to go and see the suffering myself and to understand that because there's millions of charities out there whoever you donate to but is it going to the right place normally when I don't donate my zakat I'll go to Pakistan and give it to the poor people myself because I know 100% of it goes there it is still a duty upon us to it's, it's, to find out the best the best way you can where the money is going to be donated to but human appeal mashallah I've got a fantastic structure there and with all the help, I mean, a single charity alone can't do anything without the team, the support. So, um. okay, Jazakallah khair. So you've obviously been, you've seen it firsthand. Yes. Um, yeah. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that will be quite skeptical, to be honest, because um, you know we we work hard for our money, and when when we donate in the way of Allah, we want to make sure that it reaches the places that the charities that collect say it's going to go. So, to, you know, to to Speaking to people like yourself now, brother, it's, you know, it's your opportunity. Speaking to local businessmen, um, that people that want to get involved in this project. Are you now comfortable that you've been and seen what you've seen? So we obviously know we've established there's a need, there's a, there's a, there's a massive need. Um, are you comfortable that the money that you donate personally and the money that we raise, inshallah, will be going to the Syrian refugees to help them? Yeah, I mean, I would say... I wouldn't say 100 percent. I wouldn't say a thousand percent. I'd say a million percent. Subhanallah. Mashallah. I've gone there myself. I've seen the structure. 
human appeal, we've got such a fantastic track record, I think 18 million turnover. The credibility is there, the organisation's there, we met all the chief suppliers, as my brother said here, we met all the team, alhamdulillah, I'll be, you know, I'll vouch for it 100%, and the track record is all there anyway. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Um, I just want to bring in uh, another volunteer, um, Gakaz, uh, for those of you that come to the to Green Lane, you've probably seen him around. Um, Gaka, so you went as a volunteer, um, <coughs> and you're obviously a part of the, the task force. Um, just tell us, you know, what did you see when you went there? Exactly, you know, one of the most important things that we actually saw in the orphanages, in the rehabilitation area, in the mill, the factory, like Brother Amr just said, that the whole chain, do you know what it includes? Every single area, all Syrians. Every single worker, like you've probably seen other videos as well that have been posted. The factory, the mill that we went to, where all the trucks and everything, you know, the depot where all the flag is stored. All the Syrians who actually have come to Turkey, they are actually working there. And you probably saw the video of Brother Ahmed, who was a teacher in Syria. The brother lost 10 people from his family. He lost his own brother, he lost his own sister, all of the all of the children and everything went. But he's there now, he's working in the depot, why? Because he wants to serve just the people of Syria. Now subhanAllah, now look at this spot we've got here. All the people, they've been through all these like, you know, trials and tests and everything. But still, one thing they don't give up is praising Allah. And the other thing they don't give up is tabakul. They've still got it there, that you know what, we are still going to stay here and we're going to help the people. But they are still asking us, you know what, subhanAllah, when we hear from them, bread, like, what is bread for us? We don't even, you know, we buy two, three loaves of bread when we have three people in our family. And those people are literally wallahi, they are crying and they're actually dying without this bread. They are dying with hunger. Wallahi, it's not, not just children, the elderly, even elderly people as well. And they're not getting these basic needs, like you saw. The brother said, we don't ask for cars, we don't ask for houses, we don't want this, we don't want that. Only thing we need is food. Now, subhanAllah, like, that's the right of every single human being in the whole world. And the basic thing these brothers and sisters are not getting. Okay, Jazakallah khair, Gaka. I just want to bring Samir into the, into the discussion. Um, so Samir is part of the, the task force, but didn't, didn't, like myself, didn't go to Turkey. Um, so Samir, um, what 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 do you think? Um, obviously, from 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 a UK perspective, um, how do you think we can help? It's not a problem. Uh, I mean, it's 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 all out there. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's very simple. The brothers were there; they've seen it themselves. And with the issue of of the Syrian people, I think you know it's not a hidden thing. It's not something that you have to search for. It's something that is really really obvious. And you know, just you know, click of a button, you would find it. It's all out there. It's nothing new. But this trip was to bring it down to us, to make it more realistic, to to show us this is actually true. So these brothers, mashallah, that did go, they have not come back to tell us, you know, what they seen with their own eyes. And subhanallah, you know, the the you know what the brothers. I've already mentioned, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's, it's you know, small, in, you know, in comparison, or very small in comparison to what they did see uh, over there. I think they were protected, right? Um, so, as a, as a, a charity, um, and, and as a masjid too, it was a responsibility for both Human Appeal and the Greenland Task Force that, that you know, obviously the brothers didn't go into Syria, um, so they were, you guys were in Turkey, right? I know you went up to the Syrian border. Um, so, I just think that, you know, we could only go to um, certain areas. We're restricted to the areas that we can go to. And even, you know, so we almost went to the safe zones, right? Is that right? We went to the safe zones? So we went to the safe zones and still, and we seen in the, in the camps and the orphanages the need. Now imagine what's happening in the heart of Syria. SubhanAllah, where the cameras can't go, where the volunteers can't go. I know Human Appeal, mashallah, are operating um, within Syria. And I know, you, you know, SubhanAllah, you know, well, I reward every single one of your volunteers that work there because this is like, 
you know you're in the heart you're in the heart of it right you're in you, um, work so just imagine if you you guys went into Syria and saw firsthand and spoke to the families I, I guarantee the stories that you'll be telling now would be a lot different um, subhanallah so okay I just want to bring um, the brother in here too again you went with um, the the task force um, Brother, sorry, do you want to just introduce yourself? And, and, um, sorry, my name's Arvid, um, I'm a volunteer here at Green Lane Masjid, and um, I was asked to go along on this task force. Um, I've been asked to go on visits in the past, I've always said no, but something in time told me I needed to go this time. And uh, humbly, I'm glad I did, because I saw with my own eyes the people and the suffering, and and I think what we saw was just a fraction of it because I know Armour and the other guys went in 2013 they went to the Syria side where they saw sort of hell at its worst I think and um, we saw the, the, the clean version of it the refined, the helped version of it and even then, you know um, I remember being at the orphanage the first orphanage we went to and an amazing place like Armour said I think it was, we looked at it and we thought almost like it's a template for what orphanages need to be like there because of the way the kids were. Beautiful kids, much of them. Um, all of them have suffered and we can't even imagine the type of suffering they've been through. And they've been looked after by some amazing volunteers, some women there. And one of the most touching things was that they, the children call all these women Mama because these children we refer to all these volunteer women as mama because they don't have mums, they don't have dads. And all you could hear was mama, mama, mama. And Allah reward these women who were in this place because I didn't see a single one of them raise a voice, get cross, get angry with these children. We just dealt with it, these children, these beautiful little children who just wanted to play. And um, you know, we played with them, we had such fun with them, we got jumped on. We got, got, got piggy <laughs> We got, yeah. you know, we had, we had piggybacks, we did all sorts of things, we played Skittles. Bashir here organised a little Skittles match yeah. with the kids and subhanAllah, they really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, and, 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 you, and for me, the, one of the biggest things I noticed was there was a, a lady, a volunteer, child psychologist, and she's basically committed all her time and her effort to helping these children come to terms with the suffering that they've gone through, both emotional and physical. And, uh, and we sat there, we thought these children were so well balanced, didn't we? I think we all, we played with them and they were so nice and they were so playful. And, we, and for a few minutes we kind of forgot what they'd been through, because they were just playing and eating sweets and stuff. And, uh, it only actually came back to me really hard as we were leaving. Um, as I was one of the last couple of people to leave the place. I think most of the brothers were outside waiting to leave. And uh, as we were walking out, this young lad, he's only about five, six years old, and um, he'd been playing with us in tide and he didn't want us to leave. And he was like grabbing onto me and saying, stay, stay, stay. And I said, no, no, go, 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 go. And as we walked out, I got the shock of my life because he pulled the knife on me and I was in shock, I was thinking what's going on and this little boy is saying stay, stay, stay with a smile on his face, he's got a knife in his hand and I'm talking a good four or five inches long knife and I was so taken aback, I was thinking what's going on and um, one of the guys nearby just took the knife off him and sort of calmed him down and off we went and it only then occurred to me that it doesn't matter what happens these children have the memories of what they've been through. Um, it doesn't matter how much they get helped, they've got those memories of what happened to them and it scars them emotionally, physically, psychologically. And these are the children who have been helped. These are the children that we saw have been helped. And um, it makes you think about the thousands of children who are still in Syria who haven't had any help. And these children who've had no social, psychological help at all, and all they need is food. And it brings it back, it brings it back to the fact that they need food. Brother Bash, um, okay, Jazakallah Khair for, for sharing your story. Brother Bash, we, the, the, the brothers have obviously spoke about uh, the need. Um, what's Human Appeal doing in Syria? 
Uh, alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, as I said, we've, we distribute in a thousand tons of flour uh, each month, alhamdulillah. Um, and we've got our team there uh, working hard. And the brothers, I mean, when we all got there, the, the flowers ready to be packed, the, the trucks, like 20 trucks, um, were ready. Um, and they were going, going, uh, going out as we speak. Um, so alhamdulillah, you know, I want to thank all the brothers for coming out uh, because you know, it's a very tough thing to, to see. You know, we see it on the news and sometimes it's more graphic on the news and you think, subhanAllah, that's really bad. But when you actually go there and you sometimes looking into a child, uh, you know, it's cliche it sounds, but genuinely looking into a child's eyes, and I'm sure all these guys will tell you, it's sometimes just as bad, if not worse, than seeing all the, sometimes the attacks and, and the bloodshed. Honestly, because <coughs> those are the innocent children, you know, they haven't asked for this. You know, it's it's just um, you know it's just they've been put in this situation um, for for a lot um, for a lot as a test, you know, and they've been tested. Subhanallah. And uh, for me personally, I look at it, you know what this is a test for us as well. I, I, you know, if they've been tested with their lives, with their family, that's that's a real test. And what are we being tested? With our money. That's all it is. We've been tested with one simple thing, which is our money and our time. You know, it's not affecting our our families in terms of their danger. It's not affecting you know. They don't even get attacked, nothing else. And this is how I, I see it now, subhanAllah. It's like, you know, as he was saying in the orphanage, you know, I sat back and I reflected after a while. And, you know, the kids, and I've never seen this before, the kids were competing for hugs. So they're trying to, there's only four women, and they were competing to just to be hugged. And you feel, subhanAllah, you know, you know how many times do that kid sometimes they're oh, we're too busy, we're too this, we're too that? Because that needs to be shared, right? Yeah, yeah, literally. So even the hugs need to be shared, and they're competing, and sometimes they won't, they'll hold on just so they don't get put, you know, they don't get put down on, onto the floor again. And you think, subhanAllah, even a hug, you know, that's how, that's how, to a, you know, that's how damaged they are. That's how damaged they are. And you know, things are bad when, when kids, when kids, all the ones a hug. So it's it's really difficult. It's really difficult. You know, with the children, it was like when you go to an orphanage and you try to go and help. We thought we would go there to give them a bit of love. But why we came back getting so much love from them. So much love. They were just, like I said, they were jumping all over. They, they would eat half of the sweet, they would put the other in my mouth. And my friends who asked me, like, when I come back, how was it? The only thing I can see and I could tell them was, man, subhanAllah, you know what? These children from Syria, they've just been blessed in such a way, they are something else. That land, this land of Shah, this land of Syria, is blessed in such a way that even this little, little three, four-year-old kids, they've just been blessed with so much rahmah, so much love in their heart that they just give so much. You know, that, that we talk about the test and um, we talk about this, the um, Syria and the Syrians and our brothers and sisters going through the test, but you know, I think the test, it, it, like you've said, is, is on us, subhanAllah. <coughs> You know, everyone's probably seen a video um, on, on, on YouTube or Facebook or whatever of what's happening in Syria. And I, I know myself, before I got involved with the task force, I used to always think to myself, how can I get involved? I, I need to do something. I can't just sit here and watch these videos. And we need to be quite practical in the way that we, you know, because I think we can touch on this topic a bit later on, but yeah. I think we need to be quite practical on how we can help. Yeah. you know yeah. um and the steps that we can take and i think alhamdulillah we've been given an opportunity yeah. and I, I don't think we should let this opportunity go and miss to be honest i just yeah. so, sorry but i just want to bring um adnan in adnan again is a is a um a volunteer on the task force um so adnan again like myself you didn't go to um to, to turkey but um you've obviously heard the stories of the brothers and sisters as they come back and you obviously know about um of the, the project. Uh, what's your message for, for, the, for the congregation? My involvement, um, part of the reason why I wanted to get involved was because I would see these videos uh, of what's happening in Syria with the kids and the families and how devastated those, those people were. And I kind of became um, desensitized to it because I would see so many of these videos to the point where I wouldn't want to see these videos. If I know that someone sent me one of these videos, I, would, I wouldn't click on it. I wouldn't want to see it. And, and almost to be blind to it. Um, because obviously it's, it's, it's quite upsetting. And I, I became so desensitized to it that it's almost as though Syria is in the back of my mind, like not at the front, you know, 
I'm too busy dealing with my own life, my own issues. Uh, and, you know, everyone's got their own lives, everyone's got their own issues. And if everyone thought the way I thought and put Syria at the back of their mind, who's going who's gonna to step up? Who's going to step up? And I was thinking, you know, there's people out there that have prob probably feel some sort of donor fatigue. You know, I've been giving money for so many years now to Syria and, you know, hopefully the situation's moving on. But if people start thinking like that, who's going to step up? And, you know, as, as you mentioned, uh, as one of the brothers mentioned, you know, it's not for them, it's actually for us. You know, it's, it's for us, we're saving ourselves by helping these people. SubhanAllah. Um, Ahmed, do you want to add to that? You know, I can't put it as simple as this. It's a... Uh, bread is such a simple uh, part of our staple diet throughout the world. And I just think that... SubhanAllah, you know what? It's bread, man. It just... It's just bread in it. That's all they need. I can't get it out of my head. It's fine, man. I think we, we often... Um, we take everything for granted, don't we? You know, it's a... Uh, I'm lost for words again. It's just bread. So yeah, what can I say to him, man? Can I, Every, uh, can I just add, you know, so how, you know when, like, when Amr is saying all this, and, and like we, were, we went there and it's like simple, it's just bread. When we were there, and I, I'm sure everyone was actually feeling this, when you see the state that they're in, and you think to yourself, the Muslim, the Muslim should be like, the Muslim almost should be like one body. One body. Oh. And, and like, that's when I question myself, I'm like, subhanAllah, are we actually, like, I'm not about me individually, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't question anybody but myself. I think it was hug. Am I? Are we actually one body? What are we doing? Are we, are we actually? You know, they're going through this, and uh, we're living our lives. Actually, that one, helping. that one bread is like uh, uh, you know, it's it's very difficult. It's the value of hundreds of gold bricks. Wallahi. Yeah. And you know, that's that's what that's how simple it is, isn't it? I, I don't think you can even contemplate you can't. You just bread until you hear some of the words that are coming back, where they're saying they're eating cats and dogs. Yeah, yeah. They're eating cats and we, dogs. We and met this rats. brother, and uh, he had said that he'd been like uh, in the siege of Homs for however long it took. I think it was, I think the siege of Homs. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was, it was more than a year and a half, two years. It was, and uh, he was the one. He was one of the one of one of the unlucky few, should I say, that actually unfortunate that had to eat cats and dogs to survive. Do you know I mean? 22 years old, innocent soul, couldn't get out of the city, and he's eating cats and dogs. And what do they want? Bread. You know, I think it's down to every single Muslim in this ummah. We have a responsibility. We have, we're going to be accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And I can't have that on my conscience that my brothers and sisters are asking me for bread. They're not even asking me for a pound. They're asking me for bread. And that's the reality of it. You know when you guys were, um, you were in Turkey and you were sending videos of the orphans coming back? SubhanAllah. And I remember watching this one video of this little girl. Um, you know when you were in the, and she was going around with the, the, the giving the tea to you guys? Um, so I have a four-year-old son, and every time I look at uh, you know the situations, I always try and kind of imagine my kids and my family in that situation. And I want everyone that's watching this video to just imagine that if you've got kids, um, either your own or you've got nieces and nephews, um, imagine if you Allah ever put you in this position because it could happen to anyone. Wallahi, it could happen to anyone because Syria not so long ago was a place where people used to go on holiday. Syria was beautiful, um, and they never imagined that this could ever happen to them. So imagine if your kids were hungry and asking you for food, and you didn't have the ability to give them food. Imagine if my, I just think, if my son came to me and said, you know, Papa, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. Um, and then I think to myself, what would I do? 
and if I couldn't do anything myself, I'd expect the Muslims, brothers and sisters around the world to at least help me. And this is all they expect from you. Um, they don't want your pity, they don't want you to feel sorry for them, but you know, what they do want is for you to... And time and time again, we see videos of them asking, where are the Muslims? Where are the Muslims? Well, you know what, they're here, we're here, and we're gonna help, inshallah, and we're gonna make this work. So I just wanna, you know, we've shared some stories, but I just wanna practically talk about um, how we're gonna help, and Sorry, if we can just... Sorry, how does that uh, You know about, where are the Muslims here, we are here, but you know, credit where credit's due, right? You know, one of the best things that I took from this trip as well was um, the suppliers and the distributors we met there. I remember we were coming back from um, a dinner and uh, we went on the bus and they asked for me to come and sit with them so they could talk to me about what they were doing. And these, are got, these guys are wealthy business people, you know, you could tell from their, their attire and the cars they were driving and, you know, they don't have to be involved in this, right? Brother Muhammad, Brother Ahmed, brilliant guys, mashallah. And you know what? They're so involved in this conflict, right, that they've created businesses, got Syrian brothers and sisters working in these companies and factories and what have you not. They're trying to kickstart life again for these people. And you know, really, they can just sit in Turkey and do whatever they were doing before. But they've actually gone into this, you know, with, with the humanitarian, you know, aspect in mind. And, you know, it's amazing. And you see that across, across Syria, even in the, orphan, in the orphanages, all the people that were employed in the orphanages were Syrians. So the Turkish people, mashallah, the barakallah, you know what? They're not just thinking, okay, we're going to take advantage of this and it's a big business for us and our economy is going to, you know, it's going to run. They're creating opportunities. They're creating opportunities for these brothers and sisters. Three million refugees across that Turkish border, right, and mashallah, you know what, for whatever anybody thinks of Turkey, you know what, they've opened their arms, right? and you know what, we're on the other side of the border, we're on the other <coughs> side of the ocean, right, and we've, we've, we, we always claim to be the capital of Islam in Europe, yeah, you know what, my challenge to every single brother and sister is, stand up for it then, let's show the Syrian brothers and sisters that through human appeal and task force GLM that we can actually go and deliver more than five hundred thousand pounds worth of uh, flour. Let's keep them running as long as we can. So may Allah give us the tawfiq to do that. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we we released a video um, a few weeks ago and in that video we said that we were gonna build a bread factory um, with, with with human appeal. I think the plans have changed now, yeah, right? So, if, are we going to talk about this? Are we going to? Yeah, just, yeah. Um, um, do you want to just briefly explain to the? I mean, uh, sisters? originally the plans were to build uh, a bread factory in Idlib, and um, the idea was that you know it'd be like a task force green lane mustard human appeal bread factory. But then when we got there, we kind of when we spoke to the experts on the ground, IHH and as they call them, her her over there. Um, we spoke to them and alhamdulillah, you know what, there and there, me and brother Ishfaq is also one of the project leads on this. We kind of decided, and the whole team, we all decided that it was absolutely futile us building another factory out there. So what we did was we took sponsorship, basically we've adopted a, a factory out there who we're going to supply the flour to. Because in Idlib, in Aleppo, they have X amount of factories, but only a few will run at 100% efficiency. So there's absolutely no no need for us to create another factory out there. That money could be well used to put into, you know, supplying flour, distributing bread, as opposed to putting the bricks down and foundations and getting the machinery in. So for us, what we want to do is we want to solely raise money for flour for the adopted bread factory that we have through Human Appeal. Um, and, you know, this is, we're going back to confidence. This is how confident we are that I'm sure then brothers will be able to account where every ton of bread is going to go. So, and we've got another visit plan too, right? So inshallah, oh. once the, the, the bed factors up and running. So, the, 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 I just want to, the idea here is, um, brothers and sisters, is to keep you informed every single step of the way, inshallah. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that I love about working with Rashid, working with Human Appeal, 
um, and the task force is that it's it's 100% transparent, right? Okay. And I think in the day and age that we live in, it has to be it has to be 100% transparent, which is why we're taking out the congregation and, and that there's there's a few members of the congregation, or at least a member of the congregation that couldn't be here today, um, that went out um, to Turkey. But as I'm sure. Um, Brother Oscar, you, you, you'll see him um, in the videos that you guys have made, inshallah, once they be released. Um, so, we, we spoke about the, the bread factory and us adopting the bread factory. Do you want to just explain, just briefly, yeah. how, that, how that works? Okay, um, I think it's, it's very important because, um, again, about the partnership with Human Appeal and GLM, um, it's really important, you know, some people, why will a whole group, why not one or two people go? And again, with regards to the congregation and, and the people, the masjid as well, and, and, the, and the community within, within Birmingham, it's always good to actually say, you know, with Armour and his team, they actually came with us. And, you know, we didn't just say to them, well, we're going to go over there and then we'll tell you guys, you know, what we need or what they need, as in what we need over there to, to supply uh, for the Syrian brothers and sisters. But instead, we went there and we learned from them. And we didn't say, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. It's not about us, it's not about what we want to do, it's about what they need. And Alhamdulillah, every single one of us got there and they were telling us, and this is the most important thing, and this is why Alhamdulillah, I think this relationship is very strong and it has to be like this. It has to be open, it has to be transparent, and it has to be for the people. And they sat there and they looked at us and said, listen, it's great that you had the idea to build, and Alhamdulillah, the intention was there to build the whole factory, and practically that would be great, but at the moment, it's not the need. And Alhamdulillah, not one person turned around and said, Hang on, well, this is this is what we want to do. Straight away, brother. As a matter of fact, do you remember? There, there, there. You know, the fact is, there's a need for everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a need for anything you can think of. They need it, right? And you know, every time we'd meet different people, there was a different need. Remember, yeah. we went to we had a meeting with IHH, who's basically the the main uh, humanitarian organisation that works inside Syria. They're a, they're a Turkish organisation, and they came up with so they identified like. A whole list of needs. Yeah. I remember all of us getting into the van after the meeting. Like, yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do this. Gonna do this. Gonna do. This. I remember me and brother Umar, who can't be here today, who's uh, the UK manager for UK partnerships manager. We were, we were sitting at dinner and we were looking at each other, and uh, everybody was having this conversation. That I remember, Abid's corner was talking about education. I think somebody else was talking about something else, and then we just looked at each other and says, "Guys, no, that's it. We're gonna stick focused. Stay focused on what we're doing." Right, I'm going to stick to the flat. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll but this is a start, right, Ahmed? Of because it's a start. this is, the, this is. I mean, we, we talk about education and we talk about orphanages and we talk about everything else. Yeah. Um, but you know, ultimately, inshallah, and I and I believe from the meetings that I've been in, this is the first, inshallah, of many projects moving forward. Actually, 2013, when we first originally set up the original Task Force Syria, um, it was all about like we were going to move on, move on, move on. And then when we sat down as, as a group of brothers, we kind of identified, you know, even though the delivery and the raising of money was excellent and it was at top level, you know, we kind of identified needs that we were thought we, we could benefit the pit brothers and sisters in Syria, Palestine, wherever we're going to work with Human Appeal, right, that we could, don we could do better and we're going to do better, inshallah. inshallah. So, Task Force, GLM and the relationship with Human Appeal, on our last meeting when I met with these brothers, I kind of identified the fact that, listen, I'm not in for a relationship for this year. I'm in, a, I'm in for the long haul on behalf of the masjid. And if Brother Ishfaq has his way, we'll be doing projects left, right and centre. Um, you know, so we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of new exciting projects that we want to raise funds through that are coming up very soon. Inshallah, so watch this space. Um, and I think, you know, it's exciting for me because one of the things I put on the table with Human Appeal was that we're not just about, we're not a masjid that just gives money. We're a masjid that wants to understand the plight on behalf of the congregation. Right, we're a masjid that has to make sure that every penny that this congregation gives is accounted for. Okay. Right, and you know, we've, we're in it, I think we're in it for the long haul, aren't we? Like, even there, I was shaking Tariq's hands and saying, look, yeah. I can really see this partnership okay. going far. Right, so let's talk figures, right? Because I appreciate we need to wrap this up now, inshallah. So our, our target is, is half a million pounds, inshallah? Our target is 500,000 pounds. 500,000 pounds, right, okay. Um, and we have, uh, how many followers on Facebook? 
200,000, right? Mm -hmm. So if 200,000 people, let's assume they're 200,000 people, donated a pound each, that's 200,000 pounds? Yeah, pounds so let me tell you how we've broken it up. Task Force consists of uh, a corporate arm, okay. right, who works solely with human appeal. Yep. Right, so the brothers who, like yourself, you're part of that corporate arm, brother Uzzah, brother Imran. So you guys work on behalf of human appeal. Then we've got uh, other fundraising, other other fundraisers. We've got a marketing arm. We've got um, strategic arm, which is heavily probably me and um, me and brother Ishfaq and um, the human appeal team. So we set the the vision of task force, what we want to do, how we want to achieve it. And then we've got you know every one of us in every way is a fundraiser, right? But you know task force isn't about nine brothers, right? It's about the hundreds of thousands of people who follow this mustard, their task force, they're going to task on this, right? It's without them, we we're not going to be able to do anything. Okay, so let's. There's people that probably obviously watched the videos, heard your stories, and now are probably thinking, I want to get involved, right? Because ultimately, it's like we've mentioned, it's a test for us, just as so much of a test for us than it is for the Syrian refugees. I, I think it's important, um, and I, I don't think we'd be doing our job properly if we, we didn't discuss this issue, is that, um, you know, sometimes you have the right intention and people want to help, um, but that it can often cause more kind of fitma, more problems, right? So you've all been watching the news and there's people that are, um, that see these videos and get quite you know emotional and feel that they want to go to Syria and fight and, and whatever else. Guys, did, did, did anybody discuss this issue with you? Because obviously, I mean, I haven't been personally, I can only say what I've seen in, in the media. So what's the message to the brothers and sisters that probably want to go out, that see these videos, get emotional, they want to help? Um, Amr? I think it's clear. Um, unless you're trained and an expert in humanitarian aid, there is no room or space for you out there in Syria because you're just going to cause havoc. You're going there for the wrong reasons and we don't, we don't need you and the Syrian people don't need you there. What they need is for us to get together, collate funds and provide them flour. And I remember a conversation with a brother over there, which I'm sure Brother Bashir will... He, he, he was in Arabic and Brother Bashir will probably tell you a bit better than what I can. But we're not, we're not needed in that capacity over there. Brother Bashir? Yeah, I mean, so obviously, we, you know, it's an issue that we have in the UK at the moment with a lot, some brothers and sisters going to Syria uh, for the wrong reasons. And I mean, with, you know, obviously the intentions are good. But as, I mean, Brother Amr's already summed up that part. So we asked, we wanted to find out, so obviously we want to be able to help the people within the UK um, if they ever come our way and, and, you know, we can give them advice and, you know, tell them the thing that we're doing right now, which is to support them by giving them the emergency aid and that's all they need. So we asked them the question, we said, what, you know, what, what message do you think we can give to the British people um, to tell them, you know, not to come here for the wrong reasons? And subhanAllah, you know, he just literally looked at us. He looked at us and said, um, "Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu was yes. sent here as a mercy to mankind. He, sent, he was sent here as a mercy. So he's basically saying, do it with like with love, with rahmah, with you know, with mercy. I don't be violent. Don't go there for the wrong reasons. Do it with love, with charity." So this is a this is a message from the Syrians, right? This, this is, is the a Syrians, message from the Syrians. So this isn't the message that we we us as British Muslims living in the West. Are giving that right because I, I I want people to, I don't want to get people you know I don't want people to think that that you know we're sat, sat here now no, no, and we're trying to kind of talk, you know this is a message that's come from the Syrian people yeah, um, yeah. this is not us this is not us us telling you preaching or this is not us telling you know this is us passing our message we're here as human appeal and task force GLM literally we went over there and we we saw things and we were told things and we just passed on that message that there's a need that people are dying and they're starving. And they have also added the fact that, look, this is what we need. And that this is all, all it is. We're there, we're, we're going to do our bit. And we're up for the task and we hope that sure. the people are sure as well. Sure. Okay, um, Amr, do you want to add to this? I think, um, look, if you feel that you want to like, go out there and you want to help and you want to do whatever you're going to do and you're being influenced by people or by, you know, videos or what have you not, however, you know what? This mustard is open to listen to you and to guide you the right way. Um, there's no need for anybody. Well, like, there's no need for anybody to go out there 
And it's as simple as what Brother Bashir said and Brother said in Syria that, you know what, the Prophet Sallallahu came to us as mercy. And you know, the mercy we can show them, brothers and sisters, it's not by going out there and being silly. It's by about raising money and sending bread. That's what it boils down to for me. That's the biggest weapon that you're going to send them, the biggest help, the biggest anything is just simple bread. And you know, my last words on that is, I remember the brother who had come from the war and we asked him like, what's the biggest impact you've had since the war? And he said, we found Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah. Okay, I think like on that point, if someone wants to make jihad, make jihad on themselves and dig deep into their pockets That's and right. give. Okay, so just some final words from everyone, if we just go around, inshallah, starting with uh, Brother Samir. Uh, Samir, just summing up, uh, you know. Um, being from one of the brothers who didn't go, I mean, there's not much that I can say, but I just wanted to add on to what the Bashir mentioned earlier, where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he says the example of the believers in their love and compassion towards one another is like a body. It's like one body. If one part of that body is hurt or experiences pain in any way, then the, the whole of the body, the rest of the body, then suffers from sleeplessness and, you know, fever. This is something that, inshallah, that every single one of us, brothers and sisters, <coughs> should try to implement, implement in their lives. We've heard the plight of the Syrians both in Syria and in the refugee camps in Turkey. So it is time for us, inshallah, now to step up and do something about it. Exactly. Okay. Brother? Again, just continuing from that, I think it is a duty on everyone here and around the world um, to do whatever we can, big or small, um, to make sure it gets there. And we can vouch that every penny that is coming in is getting where it needs to go. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. My side, one of the big things I took away from the trip was how committed the Human Appeal team is out there. Um, we met Tariq, who's the Turkish coordinator for Human Appeal. Um, he's a brother who's from Palestine originally, and he gave up a year and over a year without his family to go and work in Turkey for the people of Syria. And even now, when his family's there, he, he spends so much time doing the work that he does that. You know, he, he, he gives up his own family time just to be there for the Syrian people. And on top of that, there's 200 human appeal workers in Syria. They're on the ground doing the job. And like Bashir said, they're up to the task. And it's just making sure that we are now. And we need to, they're, they're there doing the work. All we've got to do is provide the money. That's all we've got to do, just provide the money so they can do the work for us. Inshallah, we'll get done. Sure. the Bashir. Yeah, um, I, I want to thank all the brothers first of all for coming on this trip, mashallah. Um, um, from human appeal side as well, um, you know, as we said, if you want to help, and you know, even if you know you have, you know, like if you have a school that you you're connected to, um, you want to be able to try and raise money. There's loads of ways that you can get involved um, in raising money. Ramadan's coming around the corner. If you have like a group of 100 or 200 people, you know, go into a simple restaurant and hold a charity dinner. Um, please do visit our website, um, come and see us, uh, we're based in Birmingham, um, in Digbeth. Um So come and speak to myself and we will support you inshallah and help you raise the money towards the bed factory. So Jazakumullah khair and um, I wish everyone a nice Ramadan <coughs> and hopefully a successful one inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Adnan? Um, I'd like to say that don't put Syria in the back of your mind. Same message as I gave before. And by, if you put Syria at at the back of your mind, put the Syrians at the back of your mind. Allah is going to ask you, what have you done to help your brother and sister? We're going to be questioned about this wealth that we have. You know, did we just spend it on going out to eat, having fun, whilst our brothers and sisters, we call them brothers and sisters, do we treat them like brothers and sisters? Would we treat our own brothers and sisters like that? Just ignore them, I don't want to deal with their problems. So if they're really our brothers and sisters, and you have the wealth, and alhamdulillah, most people, especially in this country, you know, have some wealth, some have more than others, but generally everyone has some surplus wealth. Give it to those who need it. And the other thing that I'd like to mention is that 
our good deeds aren't enough and our sins are many and hopefully by you digging deep you know you inshallah will be able to expiate for some of these sins and may Allah accept it from all other brothers and sisters who are involved okay. Okay. you know what I want to say is that you know, just like the brothers are saying as well the fact that inshallah we're going to be you now going towards with this fact that we saw 175,000 breads they're creating in one single day. Do you know how many people that's feeding? 60,000 people. That's every single day. Now, subhanAllah, think about that. I just remember that brother, Brother Ahmed, when we asked him, how is your Ramadan, how is your Eid? He says, we have Ramadan, but we've got no Eid. Eid means happiness, joy, this, that. But subhanAllah, these people have nothing. They just need to be able to eat, but they still have Ramadan. They still have that. And inshallah, wallahi, brothers and sisters, take this opportunity. We're just carriers of this, you know, this mal, this dola, it, you know, this wealth, everything will be given. It's going to be taken away, either from your death or with your own will right now. Give it in a good way. And this is an opportunity for you. Let us see, you know, a means that we can inshallah deliver your wealth in the best way possible, inshallah. Exactly. Brother, do you want to, some final yeah, parting words? Yeah, that's, that's a good point Kaka just made. Just like to really conclude. I mean, it's very simple. Um, life, we spoke about earlier, is a test. We're all getting tested. Um, but the other thing we all need to consider is, is timing. Um, I believe we all have a restricted time. So we're all going to die one day. And just like the brother just said, Kaka, whether you use your money now, this is the time now, or do you or when you die, then, it's, then basically your clock stops. It's an opportunity, I believe, that that shouldn't be missed. Everyone has their time. And if the time's right, just do it. Ahmad? Just donate the flower. Seriously, just don't want to get too emotional, but it's just so simple, man. Just donate the flower. Donate to, you know, they need our help. Just donate the flower. Look, look at it. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the, the GLM Task Force and, and the story. Um, so we're starting this project, inshallah, and we want every single person that's watching this video um, to get involved. So that we, we've spoke about the different ways you can get involved. Like this video, share this video, um, spread the message donate and if you can't donate there's other ways of getting involved each and every single one of you has got a skill set that you can use that can help us but we need the support and we can't do this on our own you know we say we're eight ten brothers the task force glm is not just eight ten brothers task force glm is every single person that's watching this video right now get involved because they need our help and it's our responsibility and one day allah will ask us what did we do um, you know, and, and subhanAllah, you know, you've got a chance to make a difference, brothers and sisters. So Jazakallah khair for watching and inshallah we'll keep you updated. Brother Asya, Green Lane Masjid, I'm up for the task. I'm Imran Majid and I'm up for the task. Are you? Thank you. I'm Abid Khan from Green Lane Masjid. I'm up for the task. Brother as a Sharif. I'm up for the task. Task Force GLM. I'm up for the task. Bashir Mahu, Human Appeal. I'm up for the task. Rijaz, Task Force GLM. I'm up for the task. Inshallah. Kakali, Task Force GLM. I'm up for the task. My name's Ishfaq. Task Force GLM, I'm up for the task. Are you? Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar.